Come on, raise those hands. Come on, give him a hot shout of praise. Hallelujah. You are my glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence this morning. Thank you, Lord. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Beloved of God, if you would now follow me into the Word of God as we go into the book of 1 Corinthians. And we will be in chapter 2, reading verses 9 through 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 9 through 12. I am reading out of the New Living Translation. Yes. How awesome he is. The Word of God says to us today, that is what the scriptures mean when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Now there's a but. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. For his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except the person's own spirit. Mm. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. Verse 12. And we have received God's Spirit. So if we have received God's Spirit, he's telling us we can know God's deep secrets. And then he goes on to say, not the world's Spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. I want to talk today about building, continuing on the theme of building. But today it's focused on building a stronger spiritual connection with God, thereby building and creating spiritual rhythms in our lives. So hold on. I believe the Holy Spirit has a word for you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another opportunity. We come to open up your word. Your word is life. And so I pray now, Father God, that as we go deeper in you, that your revelation that you give to us, the illumination that you give of your word so that we can not only read it, but we can do it and that we can apply it to the situations in our lives. So have your way now, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Speak to us individually and collectively. But yes, speak to us. We are listening right now because we need a word for today. So speak to us. We're listening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So let me go back before I go forward as I talk about our theme of the year, which is building. And we have identified five areas in which we desire to build and to go deeper um, and to build upon the foundation that we already have in Jesus Christ. I know that many of you have been going to church for years and you've been doing your devotions and you've been hearing the word of God, studying the word of God. And so my prayer is really that God gives us a fresh, with fresh eyes we look into the word of God, with fresh eyes uh, we see what God is doing in our lives. I don't want all of any of us to have a relationship with God that becomes stale, that becomes just out of habit or just out of duty. 
but that the word in our relationship with God invigorates us, that it energizes us, that it empowers us, that we live each and every day filled with so much hope that we do have imaginations, we do have vision, that our lives are hopeful because we're expecting the greatness of God the greatness of God to show up in our lives. Am I standing up here talking to myself? Are you expecting the greatness of God, the excellence of God to really show forth in your life? So we are building a legacy that what we expect from God, the faith that we have in God, that that does go down to our children and then to our children's children, that this is a legacy of faith that we are building, a legacy where, yes, your family trusts in God, your family believes in God, your family believes what God has said in his word, and then we're building for God we're conscious of his kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're, we're building up the church. We're praying for more laborers to come forth. We're praying for a greater manifestation of the fivefold ministry here. We're praying for a greater exhibit of the uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're praying for that. We're praying that evangelism becomes our heartbeat, that it's not only what happens inside of these walls, but what happens outside when we take evangelism to the street, where we take evangelism to our jobs, where we are witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. We're building the kingdom of God. We are building healthy relationships. We know we have to have self-care. We know we have to have selfless love. We know that we have to have boundaries in our relationships to have healthy relationships. So we're building healthy relationships. We are building bridges. I love the way Minister LaToya says that we're building bridges and not walls. We are building bridges to forgiveness, bridges to reconciliation. People matter. Our relationship with people matter. We are designed and created and wired for community. We are not wired to be alone and isolated. No matter how much people get on your nerves, no matter how much they try you, no matter how you may have been negatively affected by what people have done in your life, we are still wired for community. It is the devil that wants to isolate you. It is the devil that wants you to stay in the house by yourself. It is the devil that wants you not to have a desire to get out of bed. It is the devil. God created us for community. Community. So we are building bridges, forgiveness, reconciliation. We are also building spiritual rhythms, that deep connection and intimacy with God that becomes a rhythm of our lives. But as we talk about building, I hope you're getting the message. You can hear it in each of those five areas that when we say we're building, it's not, you know, the the glamour, the beauty, the blessings that you can count and see all of your material blessings and your material blessings are growing and getting bigger, expanding, they're building. That's a byproduct to me of our focus on God. I need to say as your spiritual leader, I know God is gonna bless you in, in many ways, miraculous ways. I know he's going to do that. I know he's going to take care of all your temporal needs. I know he's going to do that. But understand when we're talking about building, it's not for the glory of ourselves. It's not even about us. It is about God. 
that through your life, God can be glorified. It will be good for you. It will be great for you. But the focus is, it's for God's glory. It's for his glory that people would be able to look at your life and they could see how God's favor, how his grace, how his mercy, how his love is impacting you, how it's impacting your life, how it's impacting your children's lives. It is, again, about people seeing God through you and that you are receiving the benefits of your relationship with God. In your life, people need to know God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's about your life influencing others to make their way to the cross at Calvary, that they would be saying, what must I do to be saved? Because I want to be saved like you. So we're building for the glory of God. Can you say, I'm building for the glory of God? I'm building for the glory of God. Yes. Okay, so let me go into the message for today. That was our recap. So to be successful in building, one of the things that you have is a blueprint. And I want you to know that God has had a blueprint for your life before you even were born. I believe that from the foundation of the earth, God always knew that you would be. And that in knowing that you would be, that he had a plan for your life. Just like a builder before they put together whatever they're building, a house or whatever, they have an image, they have a blueprint. An architect may have come in and, and made a blueprint of how the house is to be built, how the house is designed. And so I believe God is the person who has given us our blueprint of what our lives are to look like. But of course, you have um, the option, you have the choice to accept God's plan for your life or to have your own plan. You may have your own blueprint for your life that doesn't align with God's blueprint for your life, but you have the choice. You can decide, I'm going off of my plan because God's plan isn't working for me right now. It's, I don't see how it's going to get me what I want. I know everybody talks about God blessing them and, and doing this and doing that, but all I know is my dreams aren't coming true right now, and I'm, I'll work my own plan. People make that decision, and maybe their plan looks successful. And, and yes, they can build, they can be successful. They're, by the world standard, there's a whole lot of successful people that are not believers. They are not believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, so that would ask the question, do I need God to be successful? But I will say to you this morning that you can decide what your definition of success is. Your definition of success may be according to the world standards. And the world standards of success is that you look good. You can even touch up what you want to touch up now. You can even add to what you have now. You can do all of this to fit whatever the standard is of what looks good, what the standard of good is, what success is. You can have a, a whole resume of, you know, your intellectual pursuits and your, your uh, degrees and all of that. That'll make you successful by the world standard. You can have a whole bunch of things that say you're successful. But the question is, is that God's definition of success? So you can get stamped successful by the word, by the world. But the question of success for the believer is, is God? Am I fulfilling God's plan for my life? Because I believe if you can answer yes, I'm fulfilling God's plan for my life, then that success according to God's standard. But again, you have the choice to say whose plan are you working 
towards. Because I would believe that the architect who gives the builder their blueprint and the builder chooses to build something else, though it looks successful to the architect, it's not a success because you didn't build what I planned for you to build. Are we not seeking God in this? Seeking God in our building. So as I go to the context of the word today, and we're talking about God's thoughts and his plans, if we're not reaching for the plan of God, then I believe we will miss out. Because we just can't seek what we see in the natural. We have to seek that which is spiritual. We want to reach to understand spiritual things, the things that human wisdom cannot understand. When Paul is talking in this chapter, he is really um, delineating and differentiating between uh, human wisdom and divine wisdom. Human wisdom will get you to make right choices in the world. But divine wisdom will get you to focus on that which is spiritual, not that which is temporal or temporary. And so what he's really pressing for us is not only to build what we can touch and see, but to build our connection with God, to build it, to go deeper and to go stronger in spiritual things. So he says in verse 9, this is what the scriptures mean when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love them. And many times people will put the focus and the subject of that scripture on us. It's about us. It's about what God has planned for us. It's about um, what God is doing for us. But he says this is what the scriptures mean. So my question was, well, what scripture? When you say this is what the scripture means, it means that it must have been said somewhere else, and now you're helping to bring further um, definition or information or illumination to what that previous scripture said. And so it has been said that Paul right now is paraphrasing the scripture or the word that was written by the uh, prophet Isaiah. So if we were to go back and see what the scripture that he's talking about, what does it mean, we would go to Isaiah 64 and 4. And Isaiah the prophet, as he's crying out to God, for the children of Israel, for God to show up for them, he says these words in verse 4. For since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait for him. So the emphasis is on God. No ear, no ear has heard, no eye has seen a God like you. How awesome you are. And, and he says, for those in the works that you do, do, for those who wait for him. And so the focus is God. No one in their human wisdom can ever comprehend ever imagine just how big our God is, just how awesome our God is. No one can imagine the true plan that God has for each of our lives. God even tells us, or the prophet even said to us, uh, uh, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. We can't reason God. We can't reason out what God is going to do. If we take an honest look at ourselves, we would say, God, 
You're doing all that for us? You're doing that for me? I, I, I know, I know I didn't pray like I, I should have been praying. I, I, I know I spoke some things I shouldn't have spoken. I, 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 forgive me, I know I shouldn't have been where I was supposed to be. But still, God, you do what you do. You are awesome. You are big. Human reason can't even define or explain why God does what he does for us. Human reason cannot explain why Jesus went to a cross for a sinner like you and me. Human reason cannot explain that when we were yet in sin, Jesus stretched himself out wide. Human reason can't explain it, cannot explain it. But I'll tell you what the scripture consistently reminds us of is that we are on the mind of God. We are on the mind of God. So Paul goes on to say, okay, they can't get it. They can't reason God. They can't reason why God does what he does. Nobody can really understand in, a, in, in our thinking and in our intellect why he does what he does. But Paul says we can tap into God. And we can know the thoughts of God, and we can know the deepest secrets of God. That's why he takes what he just said, and, and he said, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. And he puts a but that's getting ready to change that. Oh, yes, there is. There, there, there are people who can know and can imagine he says, but it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. So he says, by his spirit, we can know the deep secrets of God. He says, for his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets no one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except by God's own spirit. I don't know if you have any pets. Do you think pets think? You, you think they have their thoughts? You know, I debated with somebody one time who said they're animals. They can't think. They're not thinking. They do everything by instinct. Well, like I told the first service, I believe that the cat that's in my house right now knows how to sometimes just hit that nerve with me. Like when I'm on a Zoom call, and the cat decides to jump on the chair behind me. Now, he, he, she knows how many times that I have gone off camera to take her and put her down. Now, she knows that. But sure enough, when I'm on a Zoom call, she's going to jump behind me. I think she's thinking. <laughs> I'm going to get her now. She ain't going to get that food like I want her to get that food. I'm going to get her now. But I can't think like a cat. I don't know the thoughts of a cat. The cat doesn't have a spirit like ours, like my spirit. I can't know. So this is what he's saying. Um, only your spirit knows your thoughts. And the only way we know God's spirit and his thoughts is by his spirit. Only but when we connect with the spirit of God is that that's when we can know the thoughts of God. So that's why when I talk today about building, 
I'm talking about you seeking the plan of God for your life so that you would know the thoughts that he's having about you. And the only way you can know the thoughts that he's having about you is if you connect with his spirit. The, read it again. It says, we have received God's spirit. No one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. We have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given to us. If you go up a few verses before where I started at today, it talks about that Human, again, human reason cannot understand God. Human reason cannot decipher the thoughts of God. And the example given is that had human reason been able to figure out God's thoughts, then Jesus, they would have never put Jesus on the cross. They would have never crucified Jesus if they could have understood the thoughts that God was having about his son coming to earth. Because had they been able to reason, these wise men, these smart men, these men who knew the Torah, the law of God inside out, these men who believed that they knew everything they needed to know about God, the word of God said, had they known the thoughts of God, they would have never sent Jesus to the cross. Because in sending Jesus to the cross, in crucifying him, we now have victory. We now have victory over sin. We now have a right to the tree of life. We now get to live eternally. We now get God's spirit on the inside of us. We now declare ourselves forgiven, set free. We now have grace and mercy. If they could have reasoned that out, they would have never let Jesus get on that cross. Never crucified him if they knew the thoughts of God. Only by a relationship and a connection to the Holy Spirit will you know. And when the Holy Spirit, when you're connected with him, we know he dwells in us. And when we are connected with him, we begin to read the word of God and the word of God comes alive. We read the word of God and the word of God gives us guidance to our lives. It's the word with, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that transforms us that you get that better version of yourself in the likeness of Jesus Christ. It's the word that uplifts us. It's the word that empowers us. It's the word that cleanses us. Cleanses us. It is the word. The human heart cannot conceive what God prepares for those who love him. Our helper, our paraclete, our advocate, the truth bearer. That's the Holy Spirit. So we must stay connected. So as you think about building, I want to encourage you to build your connection. Go deeper, go stronger in your connection, spirit to spirit with God. When we become saved, we connect spirit to spirit. He tells us our mind hasn't even caught up to what is going on in our spirit, which is why we have to have a daily renewing of our mind. We, we make the choice in our, we believe in our mind, okay, I'm going to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. We make that connection spirit to spirit, but our mind hasn't caught up yet, and our heart definitely has some transforming that has to happen. He has to put a new heart in us. He says, we have received God's spirit. And so therefore, we know the things that are freely given to us. What has been freely given to us? Forgiveness of sin has been freely given to us. We didn't earn it. It's freely given. Eternal life, it's freely given. The fact that we are adopted into the family of God is freely given to us. 
the Holy Spirit is freely given to us. Grace and mercy is freely given to us. Peace with God is given to us. Access to God in prayer is freely given to us. Victory over sin, we didn't fight the battle, but it's freely given to us. So yes, God wants to uplift you. Yes, God wants you to see, get to your next. Yes, God wants you to build in life. He wants you to receive the seeds from the harvest from your seed planting. Yes, he wants you to get all of that. He wants you to have generational blessings, a legacy. But he wants you to connect deeper and deeper in your connection spirit to spirit with him. So that's where I get to spiritual rhythms. Because if we define a rhythm, it's a movement. If we think about spiritual rhythms, it's the movement that we have with God. Everything around us has a rhythm. God has a rhythm. The universe has a rhythm. Seasons have a rhythm. Our bodies have a rhythm. Our heart has a rhythm. You could put the, your hand over your heart and you can hear your heart beating. Your heart has a beat. It has a rhythm. It's the regular beating. It's, it's, it, it's the blood moving through our body, the electrical impulses that our heart is receiving. It's in our heart that we hear the beat. But now there is something called a rhythm, a rhythm, I think I'm saying it right, where your heart has an irregular heart beat. And when you have an irregular heart beat, it may lead to some other complications. And so that's why the doctor listens to your heart that they might hear the rhythm in your heart. So when we talk about spiritual rhythm, there should be a rhythm to your connection with God, a spiritual rhythm. So if I could share with you my rhythm that I have every day, I call them my spiritual rhythms that ensure I'm connected with God, that I have a flow with God. So my rhythm would go like this. I open my eyes and I say, good morning, Holy Spirit. I ask Alexa, What's the Bible verse for today? It's a rhythm. I join the 6 a.m. prayer line every day. I get on my knees and I say, thank you, Lord, for the gift of today. moments all throughout the day. I seek the Holy Spirit's guidance all day. Before I close my eyes and go to sleep, I thank you, Lord, for your presence and the gift of today. It's a rhythm. Prayer. It's a rhythm. Meditation. It's a rhythm. Reading the word of God, it be 
becomes a rhythm. It's those rhythms that keep us connected to God. It's a rhythm. It's a rhythm in our life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And you know you have a rhythm in life, a spiritual rhythm, because if it just so happens that you forget to pray, to pray one morning, all of a sudden you recognize your day isn't going like it usually goes because you're off rhythm. You're off rhythm. And so that peace that you typically have in the day because you missed your rhythm of prayer, it doesn't feel like you're flowing in the day. But God has a rhythm. And if you just find your rhythm with the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, God will speak to you continuously. It's a rhythm. It's a rhythm. It's a rhythm. It's a rhythm. Thank you. Thank you so much. I throw things at them and they like, Pastor but it's a rhythm, it's a beat, it's a beat, it's a beat. Our life and living with God, it's a beat in our life. Amen, amen. So I'm gonna close right here and just say with all the building, don't forget to be conscious of building that strong connection with the Holy Spirit. He is your access to the thoughts and the plans that God has for your life. Amen. Amen.